Good afternoon. We've done a number of videos on early electric pickups for playing disc records from the 1920s and 1930s. Um, and we're going to do something similar but different. Now this we have here uh, is not a replay head, it's a cutting head um, which arose in the early 1930s from the MSS company and was in use for many years thereafter. Uh, and this one isn't working properly so we're going to have to get inside it and have a look at it. Here's such a head mounted on a 1940s, probably World War II era MSS disc cutting machine. It's uh, wound across on a feed screw. We've done a video of this machine um, and this is the head on, on the, my machine and the uh, other head I've been asked to look at by some people who have given me permission to make this video. I'm just going to put some music into this head here. It's in the background. Nice Joe Venuti record. And you can see we've got some modulation on this meter which is being fed into the head. If I pan upwards or whatever it is, here's the head upright on its arm. And I can clearly feel this cutting point here vibrating just by touching it. Um, so it's working. Here's our head under test and I've taken the lead from the back of my machine and connected it via these crop leads to the terminals on the top of this head under test. I'll start the music and off it goes. And if I carefully turn the head over I'm sorry I can't feel a thing coming through here. Can't feel it vibrating at all. So Oh dear, whatever shall we do? Well, we'd better start testing things. And so what should we start with first? Well, this is a moving iron cutting head. And nearly all the early playback pickups from the 1920s and 30s, they were moving iron too. And that means an iron armature is in, in a coil with a magnetic field around it. And uh, when the needle vibrates, the armature vibrates inside the coil and puts a small uh, voltage into it. And uh, this head, being designed in the late 1920s into the early 30s, works exactly the same way, but in reverse. You put a voltage into a coil in, in, the, in a magnetic field, and there is an armature with a point on it, and it, uh, it modulates the point and it cuts the disc with any luck. Um, so uh, the first thing to test is the coil and see if that, uh, what reading we get from it. Is it open circuit? Is it short circuit? I don't know. Let's go and see. Well, the obvious thing to do is to measure the resistance, if there be any, between these two terminals. And here is a ohm meter which is reading 13 ohms. Um, so that means the coil is continuous, um, assuming 13 ohms is a plausible value for it. Well, 13 ohms is indeed a plausible value because these heads appeared in two different impedances. Um, <clears throat> the earlier ones were high impedance because since they were designed in the late 20s and worked all through the 30s and 40s and indeed into the 50s, uh, they were usually driven by valve amplifiers and they were put in the anode circuit of a, of a valve they don't take much driving, the 6V6 for example was fine um, and of course but valves are high impedance devices so they had a high impedance coil to act as the load in the anode of the valve, fine and that value was usually about 2000 ohms, that's a lot of turns of very fine wire but also later they made low impedance coils as well and they are usually between 10 or 13, 14 ohms so our reading of 13 is, is indeed plausible for a low impedance head. <clears throat> What's even better is that low impedance heads are actually much more convenient today because we can drive it from a loudspeaker output of a, any ordinary amplifier. So you know, that's pretty good. <clears throat> so having said all that, what's the matter? Because the coil appears to be continuous with feeding um, energy from a loudspeaker uh, amp part of an amplifier into it but the point isn't moving so um, you know we've got to go on from there I think we're going to have to take it apart now before we take it apart 
uh, I should tell you that this video is all on the hoof. I haven't rehearsed it or anything, um, and if it doesn't work, of course, then it won't appear on YouTube, so there. Uh, so I'm going to disassemble this um, device which, and show you just exactly how simple it is. I shall unscrew the two small screws that hold the head cover on. One. These are 6BA little dots, uh, little bolts. I shall take this one off too. Then all you have to do is to remove the two terminals like so. Then there are little discs here which we can also take off and I uh, hope they don't roll away into oblivion. Um, and then these are insulating bushes of course because of the metal cap we need to take off the cover and there inside uh, you can see uh, exactly what it's like so we'll have a closer look. The inside is extremely simple um, this is a two bar magnets there's a joining piece at the top there are two uh, pole pieces the armature is down there you can see the coil just there these are the leads, the orange sleeving from the terminals to the coil. Um, so it doesn't get much simpler than that, does it? Well, if it's that simple, why the heck doesn't it work? Well, we're going to short circuit this a bit because I have looked at a number of these in the past. And um, so we've got a coil that's apparently continuous. And so what, we're, uh, what we suspect is the suspension. Um, of the armature where it's anchored down uh, and um, you take it from me that um, they've got a rubber suspension now a lot of old rubber deteriorates it goes rock hard it turns to dust and usually the rubber blocks are all right but what they did was because this head was used for so long MSS magic took ways of improving them as time went by there is a reason why the head wasn't redesigned fundamentally but that's not important right now <laughs> they did keep on using this design for 30 odd years um, so they kept spiving it up as the demands for frequency response and, and so on increased and increased over the years and one of them was to to avoid resonances they did more and more subtle kinds of damping and it's the damping that usually messes the whole thing up and I strongly suspect that the answer lies here uh, where the point actually goes into the armature. Here you see the bottom of the uh, cutting head and you'll notice that one or two of the screw heads look as though they're slightly mashed but believe me I've seen far worse than that. This head is in pretty good shape. Uh, we're going to be concentrating on the area around where the stylus goes into the bottom of the armature. Uh, but first let's have a look at the top front of the head and here you'll see I've indicated there is grease damping between the pole pieces. This is like, well, grease or Vaseline or something like that. And we don't have to worry about that because it's still pliable, it's still sticky, even though it's been there for 40 or 50 years, uh, it's not a problem. Um, but we'll have a look now uh, back underneath at the area immediately around the bottom of the armature. And here I've indicated they used to put some damping at the bottom uh, when just exactly where the bottom of the armature came out with the cutting point and it is that that usually hardens up and I strongly suspect that's what's stopping our armature from vibrating. Well, uh, there's been a lot of water under the bridge since the last scene. All I can offer you now is a long series of stills of processes of dismantling and trying to deal with this problem and there'll be a uh, voiceover. We've first unsoldered the coil windings from the terminals and uh, now here uh, we've also taken off the connecting strip uh, which is straightforward and we've now removed the two main magnets and the backing piece and now we've removed the pole pieces revealing the coil now here is the coil uh, exposed and underneath is this block of stuff which I think is the problem and having removed the coil 
and the, and the bits that, that hold down the uh, uh, the suspension um, of the armature, you can see there's a big square block of quite horrible looking stuff and it is horrible and you can see I've broken it up here and it's just brittle it's I don't know what it was <clears throat> but it's it's gone silly and we, we you know we're stuck with it uh, no we're not because we can get rid of it here I've released the armature from its clamp and uh, I'm, I'm gradually getting rid of all this gook uh, now here are all the bits uh, of everything but I have cleaned the armature which is uh, in the uh, front foreground and I've got rid of it by using acetone and uh, <clears throat> uh, isopropyl alcohol I've cleaned it all off <clears throat> and so now we're putting it back together the rubber blocks the suspension blocks as usual are in quite good shape and so we've just got rid of the damping things which uh, were applied now we've put back the uh, pole pieces and the coil and uh, then lastly, uh, what have we done here? Uh, well, we've replaced the magnetic circuit. The thing is nearly back together. And now we've put the terminals back on and soldered the coil. So uh, it's all ready for trial now. Will it work? Well, we're now going to try out this head. Here it is. We're going to try it on this polycarbonate disc, uh, which has been coated with WD-40. And we're going to get pretty clever now by warming it up with a heat gun and measuring the temperature with this laser pyrometer and um, well we reckon if we get it up to about 45 centigrade um, something like that is going to cook better well you tell us listen to the results if any Of course you need two people to do this really. So now we'll lower the cutting point and turn on the sound file. Yep, there's the mod. Of course we're doing this in silence because it's uh, half past midnight now and we don't want to disrupt the neighbours. I can see some modulation going on there. Yeah, I think it's going to work. Okay, so off we go. Lift the head. What have we got? Well, the final question is, did that recording work okay? Bearing in mind we're working with headphones. Let's find out. Uh, here we go. There. Wow. Oh. Wow. Oh. That sounds pretty good to me, for a head that wouldn't work five or six hours ago. Bye now!